Hello, hello. <clears throat> Welcome to Hometown Daily, the new show powered by hometown.com. That's that right there. I am Merwat. That is hometown.com. But the sentient AI is off on assignment while we're in our time machine. Today we're going to be talking about it couldn't defend itself. You'd say the project was tanked. Crypto hand wavy bull crap. Robot fish mu muscles. Fossil trees. Zombie deer disease continues. Canceling medical debt. A flying rat detained. A millipede alien face. And it might be. Might be. Laying it on a bit thick. This is uh, season three, episode 33 for February 2nd, 2024 of Hometown Daily News Show. Let's get going. So hello again on the other side of the little intro. I am Mayor Watt. I hope you enjoy the show. I'm going to rifle through this pretty quick because I already did one of the Time Machine episodes. The, uh, the Time Machine's getting a little hot. So... Let's see if I can go through these things in a streamlined fashion, post them over on YouTube and then into the podcast. We'll play catch up, bring all of the last episodes up to date on uh, the uh, the old podcast there because and you can't place them out of order. Anyway, let's get going. The first article is over in Technology Today, New York Bins Subway Surveillance Robot. That means they've trashed it. Um, I'm not sure who uses bins, but I think it's a UK thing. New York City Subway has pulled its controversial security robot out of service after a little more than five months patrolling the busy Times Square station, probably because it's getting its bin kicked quite a bit. Uh, K5, the robot's call sign goes has been retired to a storage lot which is a bummer the new york times reported friday its short stint on the force was reportedly marked by frequent charging breaks the need to be chaperoned by human officers and an inability to tackle stairs those darn stairs <laughs> so the night scope k5 has completed its pilot deployment in the new york city subway system which was introduced to much fanfare in September 2023. The device, part Star Wars, part smart car in appearance, was equipped with several cameras. So it was a surveillance bot primarily, just kind of patrolling around, but people wouldn't leave it alone. Quote, I said this was a trash can on wheels, but it looks like the wheels aren't even working at this point, said Albert Fox Khan, the executive director for anti-spy tech campaign group Surveillance Technology Oversight project they had to work hard to get stop they could have been tops but no uh with uh major crimes down and mayor mandating budget cuts across city agencies why are we spending so much money on these gadgets i don't know because humans cost a lot and they can be harmed in April 2023, the New York Police Department reintroduced a $74,000 robotic dog kitted out with cameras, a two-way communication system, and lights to assist in emergency situations. Officers have also adopted Star Chase, a GPS location system allowing police to attach a tracker to a fleeing vehicle. That's old school. Adams recently touted the city's declining crime rate. Oh, I'm sure there's something else for some certain people to bitch about, but that's okay. Let's go on to the next article. This bot is now binned. Uh, the next article is over in technology today. Wait a minute. <laughs> I got two of the same thing. Hold on a second. We're doing it live, folks. We're doing it live. How about that? Nope. Why is it the same thing? Ah, oh, brother. Something bad happened. All right. Well, we'll move on to the next article. Uh, crypto Hocus Pocus sees $6.5 million go poof from Abracadabra thanks to Cauldron problem that let users exploit magic internet money. I swear. That's right. Get the popcorn in because I swear it's true. A cross-chain lending platform called Abracadabra Money has confirmed that an exploit allowed one user to drain at least $6.49 million in Ethereum-based stablecoins from its protocol, first spotted by 
Web3 is going great. I guess that's a user over. Oh, no, it's a website. Um, fair warning that this story involves a bunch of crypto jargon, which the author will try to explain. Not me. It's the author uh, as they go along. Uh, but always remember the words are meant to obfuscate, confuse and give the veneer of reality to the mathematically abstract. They couldn't be more right. So uh, a lot of people are being made rich by this hocus pocus crap. But anyway, um, so Rich Danton is the author. The deck statement says, now you see it. It's an article over at PCGamer.com. And essentially that's what this is, is hand wavy, whatever. Um, but when there's always an exploit there, it's some middleware between one thing and another, not the chain itself typically, but whenever it transitions to or from. So let's start with the Ethereum cauldrons. These allow users to borrow the magic internet money or MIM stablecoin. Yes, really a stablecoin being called a crypto token that is in theory pegged to the value of <coughs> and backed by a recognized currency, in this case, the US dollar. So Rich Stanton understands it. I understand it. Many other people do understand it, but they are ethically or morally uh, bankrupt in the sense that they are willing to prey on <coughs> the fear of missing out. Let's see, I think this time machine has an issue with my health. <clears throat> I'm coughing again. Anyway, enter one dark wizard, an unknown user, which began to attack uh, with a uh, one Ethereum or roughly $2,300 crypto coin. And per a report from blockchain security firm, Certic <clears throat> took advantage of a rounding issue. Pardon me one second. I drink something, but I think that it might make it worse. So what they seem to have done is spam loans using a piece of confusion software called Tornado Cash, borrowing and repaying repeatedly in a manner that had them not so slowly accruing profit and then successfully transferring those funds to another crypto wallet. The attack was first noticed by the blockchain security firm Peck Shield, at which point the loss was estimated at $6.49 million. So they must have been doing it pretty quick. Subsequent estimates apparently put it at as high as $10 million and then the value plunged. So, of yes, the magic internet money stablecoin. There's more to this, but essentially, uh, because there is some loophole in their process, somebody has exploited it and uh, made some serious change. They may or may not ever find this person, but they'll probably find them because they do something stupid instead of just snuggling it away and and shutting the hell up they'll tell people about it oh look what i did or they'll try it again and, and then get caught uh let's keep going uh the next article is over in uh, hometown daily better fake better fake muscles give robot fish real kick their solution offers several advantages over previous technologies it can be used wherever robots need to be soft rather than rigid or where they need to be sensitive uh, when interacting with their environment um, many ro roboticists dream of building robots that not just combine uh, metal or other hard materials and motors but also softer and more adaptable i.e true cybernetics meat and, and machine merge together in a way that is more seamless, less uncanny valley. Soft robots could interact with the environment in a completely different way. For example, they could cushion impacts the way human limbs do or grasp an object delicately. Well, actually, you can do that with a robot technology too. <clears throat> well, the article is over, it says posted by ETH zurich but the author's name in the url that's attached is claudia hoffman so i'm not sure why they do it like that but whatever futurity.org is where it's from so the functioning of artificial muscle muscles is based on biology like their natural counterparts artificial muscles contract in response to an electrical impulse however the artificial muscles consist not of cells and fibers but a bunch of pouches with a liquid usually oil the shell of which is partially covered in electrodes <clears throat> when the electrodes receive an electrical voltage they draw together and push the liquid into the rest of the pouch it's more hydraulic than it is electromechanical 
Robert, who works with a scientific assistant, Katzman's Lab, has designed a shell for the pouch. The researchers call the new artificial muscles have actuators, where have stands for hydraulically amplified low voltage electrostatic. So 90% of what I said. In other actuators, the electrodes are on the outside of the shell and ours, the shell consists of different layers. <coughs> Pardon me. We took a high permittivity ferroelectric material, i.e. one that can store relatively large amounts of electrical energy and combine it with a layer of electrodes. Then they coated it with a polymer shell and that has excellent mechanical properties and makes the pouch more stable. Yay. <coughs> oh, gosh. really bothering me sorry about that folks one of these robotic examples is an 11 centimeter tall gripper about 4.3 inches tall with two fingers each finger is moved by three series connected pouches of the have uh, actuator the small battery operated power supply provides a small battery app operated power supply isn't all battery all power supplies like if it's going to be battery operated it's going to be a power supply it's a small battery okay whatever i'm focusing on this i know that some power supplies are plug plugged into mains power but okay whatever the robot with 900 volts together the battery and power supply weigh just 15 grams or about 0.5 ounces the entire gripper including the power and control electronics weigh 45 grams or about 1.58 ounces and the gripper can grip a smooth plastic object firmly enough to support its own weight when the object is lifted into the air with a cord. Pretty cool. So I guess that's the gripper. Or no, that's actually an artificial muscle in action underwater. They have a video. Um, so let me play it. Might as well. I'll mute it just in case there's some weird music or whatever. Untethered artificial fish. So these are the three pouch actuators. So there you go. When they're electrified, they move the little fish along. Pretty simple. Pretty smart. I like it. Um, so I, it has a, sl a very small range of motion. So I suppose what they're going to end up doing is trying to figure out a new way or a more expansive way to gain range of motion. So bigger pouch. I think it's going to be bulky at some point. Maybe they can use something else to facilitate it some type of uh, like hinging technology that will allow them to amplify the contract the contraction so that it does a, a more um, a broader range of motion in a short amount of time not sure well let's keep going though uh, the next article is over in the mobile channel alien looking fossil trees uncovered in canada unlike any of those that live at the present you won't be leaf ha ha Gizmodo. Uh, the shape of this ancient tree, a team of researchers found a 300 million, a 350 million year old fossilized tree species that looks like something from Dr. Seuss. Apparently that's what it looked like. Isaac Schultz over at gizmodo.com in a section that they've got labeled paleontology. So that's pretty expansive over there. The tree's canopy was 18 feet across, but its trunk was just half a foot thick. Maybe it was really strong. The fossils are some of the oldest known trees and were discovered in what was an ancient lake in northeastern Canada. The species is called Sanfordicolis densifolia and would have taken up residence under the taller members of the forest canopy. The first, uh, the earliest fossil trees date back to the uh, Devonian period, and these were the early Carboniferous. They like to sniff carbon. No. Anyway, um, they're just a few million years younger, apparently. So this is what it looks like. And they got it from a rock. And right there is the fossil. And then the little branches are coming off of it. You can just barely make it out. It's kind of neat. This means that the bottle brush had a dense canopy of leaves that extended at least 18 feet or 5.5 meters around the trunk that was non-woody and only 16 centimeters or half a foot thick or in diameter. 
startling to say the least. Not sure if startling is the right word. Maybe we just don't understand it because our trees aren't the same type of density and so we have different properties. Okay, let's keep on going though. The next article is over in hometown daily zombie deer disease spreading in North America amid fear of jump to humans. Yeah, this has been a kind of a talk in some circles. Chronic wasting disease is a deadly prion disease that is slowly spreading across wildlife in U S states and Canadian provinces. Um, had a recent scare with a, a deer getting hit by a car uh, immediately in front of me. Um, and it makes you kind of wonder when you know about this kind of stuff, is that being part of it or was that just the whole nature versus technology uh, conflict that we observe from time to time? Uh, the article is over at newsweek.com. Jess Thompson is the author. The disease officially known as chronic wasting disease or CWD um, has been discovered in two deer in British Columbia and Canada, marking the first time the condition has been detected in the province. Counties across at least 31 states have also previously seen cases of the disease as of November 2023. That's 31 states, folks. So, yeah, this disease is still spreading. Um, as well as being detected in 23% of samples collected during the 2022-2023 hunting season in Canada's Alberta present, uh, province. It was also detected in Yellowstone recently. Yeah, so if you go hunting and you don't get your deer tested, you might actually run afoul of this. Um, they call it the uh, a bovine spongiform encephalopathy and the Kretzfeld Jacob disease. Those are two other prion diseases mad cow disease cwd is another so i'm not not necessarily going to jump to humans but man <clears throat> it doesn't doesn't sound very nice so we won't go into why when what happens when a deer uh becomes infected but the uh lifespan is approximately 18 to 30 months and the disease is a, a debilitating impacts move slowly and then um, this is why I, I freaked out about it because I haven't read this article, but I deer typically try to stay away from, uh, cars. They are attracted to the heat being emanated from the road, but they try to stay away from cars. But it says as a deer system weakens injury, car collisions, ancillary diseases become more likely. And in the wild, the deer is killed before the zombie stage is seen. Yeah. So maybe the deer that ran out into a very, very busy intersection um, up a hill and got hit by a car may have been, you know, potentially infected, right? Don't know. Um, but you should keep an eye out and be aware of this kind of thing. Who knows how expansive this will be? Anyway, there you go. Zombie deer disease spreading in North America. Let's keep going. The next article is over in hometown daily this state to become first to cancel medical debt for eligible residents it's an exclusive from abc but this was back on february 2nd i'm in my time machine so um, i'm capable of doing this via hometown.com connecticut will become the first state to cancel medical debt for eligible residents governor ned lamont uh, confirmed in an exclusive announcement on good morning america so Meredith Deliso over at GMA or Good Morning America uh, wrote this article. It's posted over on abcnews.go.com. Some 250,000 residents are expected to be eligible. That's nice. The state plans to erase approximately 1 billion in medical debt this year by leveraging 6.5 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds, which is really interesting that you can get to a billion from 6.5 million. It's not something they did because they were were spending too much money. This is something because they got hit with a medical emergency. They should not have to suffer twice. First with the illness, then with the debt. I agree. Uh, only psychopaths sit there and go, well, you deserve it. No, I got sick. In fact, I might have gotten sick because of some sociopath not wearing a mask and coughing all over the damn place. 
Residents whose household income is up to 400% of the federal poverty line, and for a family of four, that's $125,000. For those whose medical debt equates to 5% or more of their annual income, will be eligible under the program. So that or right there is pretty big. So you can have household income up to that. But 5%? If your debt is 5% of your annual income? Yeah. That's pretty much easy. <laughs> yeah, with American hospital care. Yeah. Um, I, uh, in fact, I just looked at a medication that if, um, if you want it while it's on insurance, it's, um, oh, well it wasn't disclosed, but if it's off insurance, then it's $500 and it's just one medication. There are many others that are very, very expensive out there. So, um, it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, the burden, the financial burden that individuals have when they lose their medical coverage from companies that they work for. Um, it's just as bad, if not worse. So eligible households won't have to apply because the contracted agency will work with the state agencies to automatically wipe their medical debts clear, according to the state. So basically one thing will be talking to another thing and your debt will be wiped out. <clears throat> A 2022 analysis of government data by the KFF Peterson Health System Tracker estimated that 9% of adults Approximately 23 million people owed more than $250 in health costs. And that's cheap. 250 bucks is cheap. Yeah. Elsewhere in New York, uh, elsewhere in New York City recently announced a plan to invest 18 million to erase 2 billion in medical debt for up to 500,000 eligible New Yorkers over the next three years. I mean, we bailed out banks for trillions of dollars bail out humans they're not taking any risk just like student loans the people did it to better themselves but they're still at the whim of market forces for hiring you know and <laughs> meanwhile everybody is pumped up to well you need a degree you need a degree well now you have a, a much more educated populace but they can't get a gig and they're sitting there being a door greeter at, uh, you know, some grocery store for, and they have a PhD. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody will probably call me out saying that I'm not being real about it, but I am. Let's keep going. The next article is over in hometown daily. A pigeon detained for eight months on suspicion of spying for China has finally been set free. Bombay Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals is probably a picture that's on the other side of this link, but a pigeon accused of spying for China has finally been cleared of suspicion in India. It spent eight months in captivity after being found with markings that resembled Chinese characters. The pigeon was released by Mumbai authorities on Tuesday, local media and PETA reported. Yeah. It's a spy bird. Don't you know that? What? So what were the... Okay. A pigeon was detained in Mumbai on suspicion of being a spy bird. It had some markings on it that looked like Chinese characters. Matthew Lowe over at businessinsider.com put this article together. But I'm trying to figure out what they, they were. After people... Uh, sorry, the pigeon was detained for eight months and then cleared on Tuesday. Um after police cleared it of suspicions that it was a spy bird. What, <laughs> what was it gonna do? Oh, I know, it tweets, it tweets a lot. Oh, so this is what they found. Police had found the pigeon was uh, with an illegible message written on her wings, PETA said in a statement. So there's supposed to be something written on here? All right. So use AI and, and try and figure out what that is. So it's funny. It, the, the picture, it, it says that it was shot at a, or with a particular camera. 
Um, the pigeon was later discovered to be a racing bird from Taiwan that escaped and flew to India, according to the AP. Like it wanted to get away. Now it's going to race back. What the, the stories it's going to tweet about? Oh, it doesn't know, you know, that Twitter doesn't exist anymore. Poor thing. It's not going to know where to tweet. It's unclear whether the pigeon truly was a racing bird since police didn't release its serial number. Uh, in New York, they're called flying rats, but maybe other places too. I called them flying rats and I'm not from New York. One such bird was taken into custody in 2016 after it was found in Kashmir with a note threatening prime minister Narendra uh, Modi. Really? Okay. One such bird. You mean a pigeon? <laughs> Another was detained in x-rayed in 2015 after being captured along the India Pakistan border with a note in Urdu stamped on its feathers. <laughs> Man, people are using these uh, birds are real peckers, aren't they? I'm going on. The next article is over in hometown daily. Five new alien face species of millipede revealed in remarkable find. One of the new millipede species belongs to a whole new genus of the critters that had never been discovered before. The article is over in uh, newsweek.com. Jess Thompson is the author. Uh, the new species, which uh, resemble something out of a sci-fi movie, were found in the forest litter, the floor canopy, not the canopy, the, but the floor um, of uh, Tanzania's most remote Udzungwa Mountains. Not most remote, but remote. Uh, according to a paper in the European Journal of Taxonomy, that's what they look like. They actually look more like uh, turtles, turtle heads. Um, it's remarkable that so many of these new species did not appear in earlier collecting of millipedes from the same area, but we were hoping for something new and they got it. Apparently we record millipedes of all sizes during our field work and uh, to measure forest recovery because <clears throat> they are great indicators of forest health, but we didn't realize the significance of these species until the Mira, Miripodol, Miripodologists, um, Miripodologists, really like many feet research. Okay. Um, had assessed our specimens, Andy Marshall, a professor of tropical forest conservation at the university of the Sun, sunshine coast and discoverer of the new species said in a statement, <clears throat> Cool. Well, there are about 12,000 species of millipede around the world, but the true total may be much higher. Some estimate the say that there's going to be 15,000 species in total, but others think that there's as many as 80,000. Most millipedes are fairly small, but the re, uh, largest species of millipede found in Africa can grow as large as 13.8 inches long. These new species are much smaller than this, about an inch had 200 or so legs. Pretty wild. I thought that's a centipede, not a millipede. I guess that's a millipede. Okay. So cool. New millipedes. Everybody just look down. You might find one. Uh, the next article is over in hometown daily. A junior high principal was fired after he was caught pouring more coffee than he paid for that bastard. A junior high principal was fired after getting caught trying to steal an extra half cup of coffee. You bastard. He would pay for 75 cents, but pour himself a dollar 25 cup at a convenience store per local media. But he was caught in December by a store clerk who called the police as the principal tried to leave. You bastard. The principal of a junior high school in Japan was dismissed at, from his job on Tuesday. <laughs> Over 50 cents. You are a horrible human being, sir. I don't understand. So did he use a larger cup? Because if it's a smaller cup and you poured a dollar twenty-five worth of coffee into a seventy-five cut cent cup, this is dumb. 
Uh, Matthew Lowe over at businessinsider.com put the article together. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Look, I get it, but it's coffee. And let's see. The principal said he poured himself extra coffee seven times throughout the year until he was caught in December by a store clerk who called the police. The coffee caper. Sorry, I'm bouncing back and forth, but my mouse is not allowing me to just go slow here. The principal apologized to students and their families in a statement through the board. It's just sad. Local prosecutors decided not to press charges on the principal. The regional outlet Kobe Shimbun reported. It's not the first time Japan was has caught uh, convenience store criminals trying to cheat their way to more coffee. My God. It's 50 cents. In January 2021, police in Kamumoto City arrested a 60-year-old man accused of repeatedly pouring $1.35 lattes into a cup of 70 cents coffee. You know, <laughs> it's so dystopian. It's not like if coffee, coffee was worth that much, like jail time. Plus, wasn't the last person 59? It is. So I think it's like a, a crisis. As soon as you hit 59, 59 and 60 year olds in Japan suddenly really, really, really want to rip off a little bit of coffee. And I think at that age, you kind of deserve a free one every day. <laughs> I'm not yet 60, but I would love to have a free cup of coffee because I hit 60. Just do that for a year. I know it's a cash crop, so nobody's going to give me free coffee. All right, <clears throat> that's it, folks. I am Marwat. That is hometown.com and the visualizer is just idling there because they're not here in the time machine. The sentient AI from the future is off on assignment, doing some fundamental research themselves. That's all right. We're playing catch up in the time machine. We got another day ahead of us and then we're all caught up. Pretty exciting times, folks. Pretty exciting times. Then a whole week of the podcast is going to drop. Okay, that's it. We pile back into the party bus. Go back to the front page. I would hit the logo, but we are in the time machine. February 2nd, 2024. And that's it. I'm out. See ya. See ya.